So I've made a little video for you once again. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how I create my drop collar formed vessels. Uh, and then when I was looking at the video, I thought I could make it better by showing you some of the finished products and then showing you how I make them. So at the risk of making my video a little bit too long, uh, I went and dug out a few pots. Um, I am a bit of a pot hoarder. As you can see, there's pots everywhere here. And I just happen to have my very first, I think this is my very first dropped collar vessel. Uh, I made this at Banff. Uh, those of you that have read my book will know I went there for a six week residency back in 88, I think. Anyhow, uh, this one was Sager fired and it's got my very first textured bottom. And there's my two dropped collars that I'm gonna show you in a bit. Uh, then over here, this is a little bit different for me. I didn't do very many of these. This is uh, one of my treasure jars. And so uh, this would have been the, the dropped collar. So then of course this would have been originally at the top, pulled down, and I did that a, a couple of times and then back up uh, to make the well for the lid. Really why I'm showing you these is just to give you an idea of the breadth of uh, design ideas you can do with this technique because uh, I'm showing you about one pot, but there are many different styles. This is a perennial favorite of mine. So this is just got an orange terra sigillata on it, craw glaze, layered craw glazes on the inside. This one actually has one, two, three, four drop collars. I don't think I've done them with more than four. This piece, I just, I just love this one, this big bowl. The neat thing about playing around with these drop collars is that you can really alter the style of your piece a lot and it, you know, it really sets it off. So this one has been brought down twice. So there's the first ring, there's the second ring. Oh, this piece, I sagger fired. It's really quite cool, but I wanted to show you this so you could just see a, a really large drop collar and just how it sets the piece off so so nicely. Now, of course, you can read about all my glaze techniques in my book, My Life as a Potter. And the book was written as a fundraiser for the Legacy Project. So all the royalties are going back to the project. So every time you buy the book, you're, you're supporting the project and getting a good read at the same time. It's a win-win. Maybe I can't resist showing you these two. I don't want to go on and on, but uh, that one's got a few collars. This one I kind of went hog wild with. Um, as you can see, I. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> six collars, more than a couple. Uh, okay, so why don't I show you the finished product of what you are about to see me create. Okay. And here it is. I've been exploring recently uh, the idea of geodes. And so I've been wanting to make pieces that look like, like a rock on the outside. And then you know how when you cut open a geode, you get those beautiful crystals and such on the inside. So I have, you can't really see it here, but I have layered craw glazes on the inside. This piece, as you can see, when I was throwing it, I did three different colors. So this glaze on the outside, if you can believe it or not, is my baking soda blue sprayed really, really thin. Turns out that color it almost looks like rock. You'd never know. All right, I would go on and on and show you more pots, but <laughs> I better stop and maybe show you how these pieces are done. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. So, what is it with me today? I'm not throwing, putting them right in the middle of the wheel. Making life harder for myself. So now I'm gonna show you what is actually, for me, one of my favorite um, uh, treat forms to throw. Uh, I don't know if you potters generally treat yourself with a favorite form at the end of the week, uh, but when I'm working on the decorative pieces and I wanna treat myself for whatever, I would like to treat myself. At the end of the week, uh, this is what I would end the week on. Cause they're just, to me, a lot of fun to throw. And these are my collared neck vessels, dropped collars. So how I first stumbled upon doing these kind of edges was because I accidentally, well, 
obviously accidentally, wrecked the rim of a pot that I was throwing that I, and I really liked the pot. So I didn't wanna just, you know, scrunch it down and recycle it. I wanted to salvage it. And so I, I thought, well, why don't I just tear the rim all around? And that was how the, the torn rims began. And then it just went from there to, well, to a lot of things. A lot of cool pots. It's still my favorite to do. So this is a Raku clay body, the Seattle Potter Supply with about 25% of W Laguna clays WSO mixed in just for plasticity. And I use a Raku clay body for all my decorative work because all my decorative work is low fire. Uh, and I love the uh, stability that this clay gives. And it's very strong when it's fired too. Amazingly strong actually. Okay, centered. Now we're gonna open. Stopping just about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Pulling up. I'm just going to check my bottom there. All right, so that's my first pull. I'm going for my second pull. Okay. I think I might just choke it in a little bit down here. Okay, pull number three. So you'll notice I did this pull slightly differently. Pull number one and two, I'm just going straight up. Pull number three, I'm starting to think about the form that I want the piece to take. So I'm pulling the clay in the direction that I want the pot to go in. Okay. Now I'm gonna be doing a fair bit of work on the top part here. So I need to leave fair bit of clay up here and focus on the bottom right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choke that in a little bit. And it's giving me lots of room to work with. I'm going back for another pull. We're moving towards the fun part, which is the top. I'm 
All right, so now I'm gonna thin up, thin out this top rim a little bit. Like so, and now for my first tear. It's a very complicated method. At least I don't do like nom, nom, nom. <laughs> when you're using scissors. There we go. So that's my first torn edge. Now I'm going to fold it over on itself. So I'm deciding where I want the edge to land, which is around here. I've got my, my hand underneath there and I'm just slowly folding it over. Now, as I'm folding it, my thumb at the top part here is compressing it a little bit so that the air, though, yeah, I mean, you're bound to get some air bubbles under there, but that thumb there is kind of pressing down and the fingers there pressing up. So that will expel a fair amount of the air. And then I, what I'm going to do to help with that process too, is I'm going to move slowly downwards because I can lift the collar up again if I need to, but there. So there's my first rim. Okay, so now I'm going to, the clay is still fairly thick because you've doubled it up. I'm going to pull it back up again. Okay, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. Gonna whip it, whip it good. Said the fox of many bad puns. Okay, now we're gonna fold it over again. A little bit dry. And I want this rim to be just above the one I did before. Now you see these two rims have become pretty close, a little closer than I was expecting, but no matter. That's why these are fun pots. They, you know, you sort of have a bit of an idea what you're doing, but then the clay will maybe take you in different directions. So I'm just going to lift this rim up a little bit, gently like so. You can almost hear you guys saying, yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. And then I'm going to go under here and I'm going to spread that bottom one down a little bit. The rib. There we go. Okay. Now I see we've got a little, a little unintended rippage. So let's just change our plan a little bit. It's a little bit thin anyway. Tear this a bit. Now I could have just compressed that down and made that other rim a little thick, but I, I kind of want to show you ways to troubleshoot too. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and take another look at this rim and I'm going to shape it a little bit. Now say I've got that rim going down nicely and you see how that this part of the pot is a little bit proud from the rim. So uh, if these jagged rims are sticking out, uh, they could get easily broken. So I always try to make sure they're, that the belly of the pot is a little bit wider than that rim. But uh, say I want to make that rim more pronounced. Take your rim, rib and just go like so. And make another line there and that'll lift your, your edge up. I quite liked it sort of pointing down. So I'm going to then just take that and make it like so, okay? 
So now I'm going back to the, the rest of the piece. Now you guys are just going to be annoying, I think. Oh, there's quite a few of you. Well, let's just see. So I'm pulling up again. Pot. I'm kind of liking how this is going actually. Let's give it another whip it. So I'm going to fold it over so it's a little bit shorter this time. So there you see now we've got three rings. Kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to play around a little bit with the form. I'm going to press this one down a little bit. Kind of cool how that flattens and makes nice irregular spots. And then I'm going to lift up this one a little bit. Okay, I'm liking it. Okay. Now I'm going to finish that, but before I do, I'm going to go back in and take one more go at the bottom just to make sure everything is is as I like it. I'm quite liking this. I want to have more of a round feeling at the bottom, so I'm pressing down a bit here. So you notice, just making a little bit more of a curve. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy there. Now, because I've got no throwing rings showing anywhere, sometimes I like to leave those rings at the top, but other times I like to make it all one nice smooth line. So I'm going to take my rib and I'm going to use the flat side and I'm just going to give it this top the same treatment as the other rings. Sponge out that interior. Not that there was much there, but and then let's just smooth that up. Now, generally, I get off the wheel and look at it at this point, but I can tell everybody's looking just as I'd like right now, so I'm going to leave it and I'm going to tidy up that bottom because, of course, you know we want to make the trimming stage as easy as possible. So once again, always going in um, slowly and gently. And if you go in super quickly at this angle, you can throw your pot off. Okay, so there's a bit too much depth for me to get right through to the bat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with my needle tool. So and I'm going to take some of that out to give myself a little bit more room and go right through. Well, I was only about a, only had about an eighth of an inch left to go, but there you, there you have it. Now I'll take this part off. And that's pretty much it until I turn it upside down tomorrow to trim the, trim the bottom. Easy peasy. Now you go whip your pots. You whip them good. Have fun. Pot on.